Hello everybody, thanks for joining me once again. I'm glad you come back for part two of history lesson. The IC on the cream can stood for Illinois Central Railroad. I had a fellow YouTube channel uh, tell me that or point that out to me that that's what they thought it stood for, which is true, it is. My wife had looked it up right after I had found this and I said something about the IC, I didn't know what it stood for. Well, she Googled it and found out it's Illinois Central Railroad. So when I do read the history on the Blue Valley Creamery Company, it speaks of the railroad a little bit. So that's why the IC is on there. It's Illinois Central Railroad. I wanted to touch base on this quad, L. Miller. I talked about him. Uh, the letter E was not on the end of his name here on this tag. I'm not sure why it's missing, but it is. It's not on here. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is Claude L. Miller named a son after him, but he changed the name around. He used his middle name as his son's first name, and he used his first name as his son's middle name. So it's Claude L. Miller is the dad, and Leroy Claude Miller is the son. And what was intriguing about that is Claude L. Miller, he lived to be 58 years old. Leroy Claude Miller, his son, lived to be 85. So they switched them two numbers around. Claude L. Miller lived to be 58, 58. Leroy Miller lived to be 85, 85. They flipped the numbers around. So it's kind of kind of interesting. Their names got flipped and the age got flipped. But now that I pointed that out to you, I'm going to continue on. And I'm going to read you a little history on the Blue Valley Creamery, Creamery Company. Before 1900, limitation in transportation and storage limited to geographic scope creameries. To that time, creameries were primary local gathering cream from nearby dairy farms and distributed the produce locally. Also, cream separation and inefficient primer, uh, primarily uh, relying on gravity or centrifugal force advantages in the railroad network and cold storage so there it talks about the railroad um, and practical implementation implication of a hand cream separator permitted creameries to serve larger areas and achieve economies of scale these large delocalized creameries were referred to as centralizers, especially by those who suspected them of anti-competitive practices. Blue Valley Creamery Company was founded by Houston Wyeth, 1863 to 1925, and James A. Walker around 1900. Houston Wyeth's father, William Maxwell Wyeth, had built a hardware, saddlery, and real estate empire in St. Joseph, Missouri. Wyeth took over the business and branched into other endeavors, including formation of the Artesian Ice, Cold, Ice and Cold Storage Company in 1892. James Walker has been involved in the dairy business since 1888. Their respective experiences with cold storage and transportation on Wyeth's part and dairy on Walker's part likely contributed to the formation and success of the venture. The Blue Valley Creamery Company was incorporated in Missouri on May 1, 1900. Business was to be conducted in St. Joseph. Initial sh stockholders are listed as G.M. Johnson, James A. Walker, and H.S. Hamilton. The listed businesses, uh, business purpose, purposes are to manufacture, buy, and sell both wholesale and retail all kinds of creamery and dairy products especially milk, butter, cheese, and ice cream. And any and all such other articles and products are as usually bought, manufactured, and sold by parties and companies engaged in a general dairy and creamery business. And to pur purchase, hold, manage, mortgage, and convey to otherwise acquire, control, and dispose of all such real and personal state materials, machinery, appliances, and fixtures, as many or as may 
be necessary to effectively conduct and perform the business and purposes of which this company is incorporated. Capital stock was increased in 1901, 1905, and 1915 based on meetings uh, held in St. Joseph with James A. Walker as secretary and for the first two meetings Houston Wyeth as chair and for the last Elsie Hamilton as chair. The 1915 statement lists shareholders, residents, and share counts as Houston Wyeth, St. Joe, Missouri, Elsie Hamilton, St. Joe, Missouri, C.J. Walker, Chicago, Illinois, and J.A. Walker, Chicago, Illinois. On May 13, 1918, Blue Valley Creamery Company, a corporation organized under the law of the states of Missouri, transferred all of its property and assets to the Blue Valley Creamery Company, a corporation organized under the law of the state of Delaware and dissolved. Blue Valley was one of the larger uh, centralizers from its inception alleged by one source to be the largest in 1904. In 1917 Blue Valley hired noted dairy ed educator Odo uh, Frederick Huntzinker to establish a laboratory and, and manage manufacturing operations according to the FTC in 1918 Blue Valley Creamery Company was the fourth largest U.S. butter marketing company, producing 26,484,000 pounds, 3.2% of the total market. Swift, Beatrice, and Armour were larger. Total sales for the year 1920 were $22,963,038.66. Blue Valley Creamery was acquired by Beatrice Creamery Company in 1939. This consolidation of the two Chicago-based centralizers raised regulatory eyebrows, but was not expressly challenged. So in other words, somebody could have suspected of a monopoly going on, but nobody challenged it. I remember back in the early 70s, I think it was early to mid-70s, the phone companies were getting broke up because it was a big monopoly. And I was talking to my mom about that and asked her if, her, if she remembers that. Oh, kind of, she said. But those things stick out in my mind, different things like that in history. And I remember that they were dividing the phone company up. And basically, it was probably still one big company, but they just had to break it up in smaller ones. And just a whole bunch more pockets. But in the end, the money probably went in the same pocket. That's my theory on that. But anyways, that's the history on the, little bit of the history on the Blue Valley Creamery Company. I want to talk about, they talking about these small creameries. I asked my mom, I remember once when I was about three years old, I was really young, but I remember I went with my grandma. I remember loading up a couple cream cans in the back, the back seat of the car, and then a box with some cartons of eggs, because my grandma had milk cows. And they milked them by hand, and they carried the milk in the basement. And at the time, that's all they done is separated the milk. They put some milk in the fridge, but otherwise they separated everything they had. And I remember them taking these cans of cream over to a small town down where my my grandma lived. She lived down out in the country near Mondamon, Iowa. And so I asked my mom what small town was that, that she took it to. And I knew it was either Mondamon, or not Mondamon, but Magnolia or Logan. And she said there was actually creameries in both places. And one of the one of the places the creamery was across the street from a park. And the other one, she said that there was a small building. I don't remember if the small building was actually in the corner of the park, but that's where where you went. I remember this little little brick building and it had a concrete dock you had to pull your truck up but we had my grandma's car so we just drove up by it and they grabbed the cans of cream out of the back seat and set them up on this dock and then they had steps going up that side of the dock so then my grandma grabbed that box of eggs and went up the steps and this guy older guy he grabbed them cans of cream and he went in this 
little tiny brick building and I'm talking it was maybe I don't know if it was 8 by 10 maybe but it had a little platform scale and I remember setting them cans of cream up on the scale one at a time had a clipboard as paper and wrote some stuff down and weighed the next one done the same thing wrote down wrote the weight down I suppose on this paper and then my grandma handed him this box that had several dozen eggs probably 10 12 dozen eggs he checked them all make sure they weren't cracked or whatever and he handed her some cash and she come got in the car and had her hand with some cash in it and i don't know how much it was maybe a couple 20 dollar bills or something i'm not sure but anyways back then whatever it was it's was probably a lot of money to them but i'll i'll never forget that that's one of my fondest memories of being real little and spending time at, or you know being with my grandma anything to do with the farm when i got a little bit older one summer i did stay at my grandma's and that's how i learned how to milk i i my grandma my grandpa had passed away in the early 70s and this is when i was probably summer between my fourth and fifth grade year i think i went down there and i'd spend the whole summer and me and my grandma would get up early we'd go up to the pony barn what we call the pony barn there's a horse barn and a pony barn up there she called the one the pony barn the other one horse barn and but she had ponies in the horse barn she kept horses in the pony barn so i don't know why she called them that but that's what she called them and we'd go up there every morning we'd go up there and do chores and uh then we'd go out and get the cows and milk the cows then by the end of well it wasn't even to the end of the summer but shortly into the summer i was going up and doing all the horse chores myself and my grandma would go out and start milk the cows and i went out there and i helped her milk cows um, after my grandpa passed away, my uncles, aunt and uncles, they decided my grandma needed milk machines, so they ended up buying a small milk system, you know, and got it installed in the barn and everything, which they still had the canisters that you had to hang on a belt that's up around, or harness steel, that's up around the cow's belt, belly or back, and had the single canisters, and you put the, the vacuum cups on their teats and stuff, and that's how she done it, and then you had to dump each one of them cans in it cream can and she had to tote that down to the milk house and strain the milk and then pour it in a cooling tank and then a couple times a week a milk truck would come and pick up the milk so finding this cream can after studying the history on it and learning you know about this Claude L. Miller and found out that his son was my neighbor and that his daughter the neighbor's daughter was my teacher you know i just thought that was really interesting you know to come find out it it was close to home i guess and then thinking about this cream can and stuff it just brought back fond memories of my grandma because i i got big enough where i towed them cream cans down to the to the milk house for her i mean they were heavy but i built up my muscles you know anyways i'm gonna let this end here I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of history I gave you, a little bit of story of my childhood, remembering fond memories of being with my grandma or my grandpa when he was still alive and his pocket watch and stuff, the bibbed overalls and all that. Well, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you all in the next one. And don't forget I love you. Bye.